All right, this video is going to be on using view scan with the Epson V600 flatbed scanner. I've got my four slides on the scanner bed, the, the glass. Some advice. Wear a, a visor and use a really bright light and constantly check for dust. You're going to see dust here even after you wipe the dust off. You cannot get rid of dust unless you're in a clean room. So you're going to see specks of dust on the glass. You're going to see specks of dust on the, uh, the plastic uh, inserts, the holders, the slide holders. You're going to see dust on the bottom. If you end up with red lines in your scan, wipe the dust off of your holders. Turn them upside down. There's little white pads on the bottom. Make sure you remove the dust from them. From those, it should... Uh, get rid of the red lines in your scans or other colored lines that are in your scans. All right, so now I'm going to show you the program ViewScan. All right, ViewScan is an extremely expensive program, $300. So if you want to go online, you can uh, download a freebie that will put a watermark on the, pro on the whatever you scan, but at least you'll be able to try the program out and see if you like it. Um, get the program however you can get it is all I'm going to say. Um, $300 is ridiculous. The nice thing about ViewScan, if you have a scanner and you're not able to use it on an updated version of your Windows, say that you, you've got a, a scanner that worked on Windows XP and it no longer works on Windows 7 64-bit because they're not giving drivers, ViewScan will probably allow that scanner to, scanner to continue to work. So and I believe it's got lifetime updates once you spend the $300. If you want to spend the $300, that's up to you. Obviously, I, uh, I must have spent the $300. Okay, so let's go through some of the features in this program, just so you can get an idea of what this thing is. Input, now, I'm not going to go through everything in here, but scan to file, you can scan to file, you can scan to printer. You can actually use this thing like a copy machine, where you can scan and it will just go right to your printer and print. Source, it figured this out automatically that the V600 was connected. Transparency, you have a choice between flatbed, the glass, document feeder, which the scanner doesn't have, or transparency, which is really what a slide is. And then you've got slide film, positive or negative film. Uh, pixel, bit pixels, uh, you get 48-bit, 24-bit, 16-bit, black, gray, whatever. Uh, batch scan, batch scan's kind of confusing to me. I'm not using it, so I don't really care. The slides, my slide holder has uh, four slides, and you can control it to just scan one slide or all four slides. Preview resolution, that's automatic, or you can set it to whatever you want, just so that you're able to get an, you, so when, the, uh, when you do a preview, you can see what is on the screen. I'm scanning my slides at 1600 DPI. A lot of people say 4000 DPI. You know, the professionals use that. The professional scanners go up to 4000 DPI. I don't need to see all the dust in there. We had 4000 DPI. There's an incredible amount of dust. Um, you can see I just scan this over here at 1600 DPI and it works. It's, it's a nice picture. Um, I don't really see dust or I don't Well, You can see now those are birds up there. Uh, I don't have much of a problem with dust. I will say I'm using a little brush like this. There is dust everywhere in, in the world. There's just dust all over. When I look at my, my slides with a magnifier, I see dust all over them. I use the brush. I brush the, brush the dust, and the dust goes from left to right. Sometimes you can brush it off. You can also use one of these... Uh, cloths, what do they call these, these uh, fiber cloths, lint-free cloths. Uh, just be careful that you don't wipe off the emulsion on the slide. Uh, the dust is definitely a problem, and if you're going to be scanning at 4000 DPI on a flatbed scanner, you're going to have a big problem. Um, if you use the professional scanners, it costs uh, 500 to $2,000. They don't use flatbed, they, they have different optics, so you're probably not going to have as much of a dust problem. Auto skew. Auto skew is kind of neat, so that if you've got your, uh, if you have your slide and you put it in there, but the slide is on an angle, this thing will go in there and, and do a calculation and auto skew it to make it straight. Very cool feature. Mirror. Mirror is that if you put the slide on the wrong in the wrong direction with the emulsion down instead of up, 
you can click mirror and it will go in there and uh, do the scan the right way. Auto scan, I don't know what the hell that is. Auto save, yeah, I'm going to have it uh, save my uh, files. You have an option how you want it to save uh, the naming of the files. Auto print, I'm not going to print. Number of passes, number of passes is some idea where if you do your scan and it finishes the scan, you can have the the scanner go and pass a second time or a third time. Uh, supposedly it will uh, average out everything and give you the best scan possible. Um, these are just old family photos and nobody that has looked at what I've done so far cares about the dust or the specks or or if you can see over here the little uh, sorry the black over here the black frame of the uh, slide holder nobody cares about that all that everybody is looking at is the slide people are happy to see the slide so if you're just doing this for yourself to uh, save family memories don't get all caught up in little specks of dust do the best you can you're not a professional no one's going to notice the stuff you're not going to notice you're just going to be happy to see your pictures okay let's go further up here crop auto crop yes this thing will go in there and it will do an auto crop and I'll show you how it does what it does in a minute and it's very handy you might want to manual crop all of your files but that will all, all of your slides that takes forever auto offset auto offset is kind of a cool feature um, multi crop that allows you to crop more than one slide or one picture on the scanner at a time show multi outline since I have you're gonna see that in a minute since I'm gonna be putting four slides on the tray and scanning them you're gonna see auto cropping and then you're gonna see outlines of all four of them lock aspect ratio if you if you know that your slides are exactly one size and you're sure that you can uh, that you're not gonna have a problem with setting the dimension and the slides being off a fraction then you can lock the aspect ratio which I'm not doing border and buffer the border again involves the auto crop where it will go in there and uh, leave a buffer on the border of whatever you set it for so that you don't see the frame the cardboard frame preview area default all right let me uh, I know this is videos going long infrared Filter. If your scanner has uh, ice, you can use the ice thing. That's what the infrared clean is. I'm not doing that because it definitely alters. Sometimes it leaves. Uh, sometimes it does a great job. Other times it well, it does alter. It alters the pixels. It alters the data, the permanent data. You're better off just doing a nice clean scan with the scanner, taking all the data in, then going into software like uh, Elements or Photoshop or something and fixing up what you need to. That way you have an original clean scan that's not altered by software. Restore colors, again I'm not going to do that, or fading because you want to do that with your software, not with your scanner. Grain reduction, um, no nah, I'm not going to do any of this stuff because it doesn't allow me to get a clean scan. Color white balance if you want to control this will this program will go in there and read your scanner and then make all these adjustments for you and then you can decide if you want to keep them or not black point white point curve low curve high brightness red green blue you've got control over a lot of stuff if you need if you want to control it if you need to control it you can decide uh, the slide vendor generic or Kodak and if you click Kodak you have get ectochrome Kodachrome and I think there's like 150 other things you can load in here. Um, I'm just doing Kodachrome, and they say you're better off just doing generic and then editing in your software like Photoshop or Elements. That way you get uh, an unaltered scan. Um, scanner color space, I don't know what any of that stuff is. Color IT8 outline, that is a way to calibrate the scanner to a printed out color thing so that your scanner will be perfectly calibrated um, I don't, uh, I didn't mess with that. I really don't care about that. Again, I just want to be happy seeing my family photos and I'm not going to break my neck on this whole thing trying to come up with the ultimate perfect quality output. Um, like you can see over there, it's a beautiful scan and I'm very happy with that. Output, let's click on the output thing. Um, Magnification, you can control the scan size if you want it 8.5 by 11 or, or what you're going to print to. 
uh, after you do the scan. This is kind of cool, and, and I really like this, um, this feature. Auto file name, you've got control. It's going to go, right now it's just naming it with image. You've got a control of how you're going to name the, the, the files. Like if you would do image 1 plus, then the next one would be image 2, image 3, image 4. The plus will automatically uh, increase the number. Now, this is what I really like. And I'm going to explain something about scanning. Sorry the video is going really long, and I know nobody's going to watch all of this because nobody watches videos this long. Um, you've got the TIFF file format over here, and then you've got JPEG. Now, the neat thing about TIFF, if you save a file in TIFF, it saves all of the data, and if you go in there and open up the file and save it again, it's going to save all your data. It, it's not going to change your data. And what I'm trying to say is if you have a JPEG file, let's say that you've got JPEG and you open it up in Photoshop and you decide, okay, I don't want to do anything right now. I'm going to come back tomorrow and work on this. The minute you save that JPEG file, you have lost data. JPEG is a lossy data, a lossy file format. And so say that you're going to open up a JPEG file and you're going to crop it today and save it and tomorrow you're going to change the colors and then you're going to save it and the next day you're going to go put some text on there and then you're going to save it. All three times that you've opened and saved that file in JPEG, you have lost data that you will never recover again. If you save it in a TIFF format, you don't lose data. You don't lose data as you save it. So what I'm doing here is I'm... <clears throat> I'm letting the program save it as a TIFF, and it's also saving as a JPEG. I'm able to view the JPEGs right away. Well, I'm able to view the TIFFs right away, too. I'm able to view the JPEGs right away. I can put it on a thumb drive, plug it into the TV set or a computer, and I can look at the JPEGs. They're reasonable size files. They're not too big. The TIFF, I'm saving those as, like, a permanent thing. So if I need to alter, if I need to, audit, to edit, I can go in there, open up a TIFF file, edit the file and save it as a JPEG. That way my TIFF will never be changed, but I have something, I have an original archive. So the nice thing about this program, it saves it at the same time as both a TIFF and a JPEG, and you can also save it as a uh, PDF file if you want to. And you've got some control over what you want to do, loss format, reduction size, that means I'm, I only will lose 1% or 90 4% of the quality, JPEG quality. So you've got some really nice features here. You can also save raw data, um, which most people aren't going to be working with a raw data format. Preferences, what do we have here? Language, okay, obviously English, that's the computer. It's the, uh, the size of the font for the program. Um, you get your preview thing up here and your scan. So I've already put my four slides on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on preview, and you're going to see what I was talking about now. Here we go. The scanner is going to start making its noise. You should hear it in the background. Okay. It is, well, you can see right down over there, it is input perfection. Okay. That's what we've got now. See those little holes over there? Those are the holes in the, sl in the uh, slide holder that Epson gives you. And if those holes are dirty, if they're clogged with dust, even a speck of dust, you might get a very bad scan or you might get uh, a scan that's all pink or weird lines in there. So you definitely need to make sure that your scanner is clean constantly. Um, all right, now you see the four. You see the four slides and look up at the top you see the dashed lines of the little dotted lines the dotted lines that's the auto crop and it doesn't always work if right now you can see that this is kind of in a what is this in a portrait mode is portrait i think it's called portrait well you can see the the left to right is the widest and if there's a scan if there's a well, we've got one over there. If uh, if one of the scan one of the slides was taken with the camera turned, then you've got to go in there and adjust it because it it's not going to auto crop properly on all of the slides. It gets really screwy sometimes. So you might have to go in there and alter your cropping if you have horizontal and vertical pictures. Now 
the little dots over there in the middle, that is the skew. That's the skew part. It's detecting that the slide is not 100% perfect, and so that is going to be the skew correction. Now, where's the mouse? I put it over here. I'm going to put it over to the second one. You can see number two. And I'm going to press on the second slide, and you're going to see the auto crop kick in. Just did the auto crop. I'm going to put it over number three. I'm going to click. You're going to see the auto crop. And then I'm going to do it on number four. Press auto crop. Now I'm going to go in and do the scan, and you're going to see what's going to happen here. It's pretty awesome. All right, it's doing its thing. It is scanning the first frame, and that was pretty darn, darn quick. And there's the picture. Now you're going to see what's going to happen in a second. That is the scanner program. Now it's going to open up the JPEG in the Windows 7 JPEG viewer, and then you can see right up here, I've got it closed right now because it, will, it drives me nuts, but it will also, it's also, um, it also opens up the TIFF file, so if you wanted to do editing right now, you could. So it is saving all files, the JPEG and the TIFF, it just scanned the second picture, now, this, now it's going to open over here, and I'll show you this full screen in a minute. Quite an impressive program. Um, let me close, let me just minimize this. Now. All right, so these photos were taken out in uh, Vancouver. It's a really good program. I I don't know how the average person can afford three hundred dollars to get this. Obviously, I spent three hundred dollars because I have it. Um, it just opened it again in the JPEG box. And if I had my Elements program not minimized, it would be opening it in Elements also. So what do I think of U-Scan? I think it's a very good program. It does auto-correction. You're going to see that right now. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it. That's the program. Now watch, it's going to change the color in a minute. See how bright it got? It did the auto-correction automatically and then saved it over there. Quite an awesome program. I'm very happy with it. Um, let me open up some of these pictures so you can see. That's the full screen of the, uh, the scan. Um, yeah, there's some birds up at the top. Overall, it's really nice. I do have some problems sometimes, like I said, with the vertical and the horizontal. With the cropping, it gets all screwed up. Um, and that takes, you've got to be aware of that. I had some problems with lines in the scanner, and that was strictly dirt. And otherwise, I love the program. It is definitely worth what I paid for it, and I would recommend it. If you can't use it, then then just use the Epson software and don't let the scanner do any alterations. Do a a nice clean save. Do a nice scan. Don't don't use ice or reduction. The only thing you want to use with the Epson software is sharpen. Um, do your scan and try to save it as, if you're worried about it, try to save it as a TIFF so that you can go in and do editing without losing data and also save it as a JPEG so that you can view and you'll have a smaller file size. Um, this one scan, I'm scanning these at 1600 DPI, one slide is about 800K and the TIFF is about 5 meg. So make sure you've got a lot of disk space. Um, I do like the program. If you can't use U-Scan again, just use the Epson software. The Epson V600 is definitely a nice scanner. The only problem is you need to make sure there is no dust on this thing or you're going to have problems. Also be aware of cropping. I would recommend, it takes a long time, it definitely is a pain, I would recommend doing a preview every time you put four slides on there and then go in there do your adjustments, your auto crops, and then do the scan. When I was doing, when I had everything set up and I was just putting the four slides on there and doing the scan, I was having a lot of trouble and I was having problems with cropping and auto cropping. So my advice, definitely do preview and then do a scan and um, hopefully this video helped you. 
Uh, try to go to my main page if you can, channel page, click on support this channel and give me what you can if you want to. Uh, subscribe, do thumbs up, uh, watch all my other videos and enjoy yourself. Happy scanning. It's really awesome to look at some of these old family uh, slides and pictures and relive your childhood and um, see things that you don't remember and get lots of tears in your eyes from uh, really happy memories of where you came from and what your life is all about. So enjoy it and it does take an incredible amount of time to do this. You could take it to a store. It's not going to be as rewarding. It might not be as good. It might be better. It might not be as good. Um, and I'm happy I'm doing this myself because it. Uh, I get to see the pictures right away and I get to see the old cars and the old buildings and every day this is a, a very meaningful project for me. So good luck with your project and enjoy it.